Hello everybody, my name is Josh, and welcome back to the Zelda 1 playthrough of the first quest through Zelda Classic. Today we are heading to level 7, which is nowhere near as bad as the other stage that we just played, level 6. What a fun stage that was, that was a great stage. Level 7 is nowhere near as bad as that, because we don't have to deal with frizz ropes. Yes. Bloody love whiz ropes. No, I don't. I hate them. <laughs> they are a terrible enemy, and they're just so much fun to deal with, especially with Link's tankiness in Zelda 1. That makes sense, you know. Link attacks like a tank in this game. Anyway, level 7 requires the use of the whistle to get into. And it's on the other side of the world, and we have to walk our way over because there is no warp that's actually. See if we can get there. Just a sec. I keep forgetting about the whistle. I'm sorry about that. You can kind of influence uh, where you're going to go by basically holding a direction. So, I'm going to head over to level 3. Here we are. And from here we can make our way over to level 7. So you may notice the pond up there, and there's actually another pond up on this side. And you need to play the whistle on this screen and it'll clear out, and there you go. Get a beautiful entrance into level 7. Now, as I was saying, level 7 is really not as difficult as level 6. First off, we have a mini-boss. We saw these in level 2, you may remember. And these are easily probably the most annoying enemy to deal with in this place. <laughs> and even then, they're not that bad. We're also going to be getting a beautiful item in this level. Not too helpful of an item, but, you know, it's there in case we need it. And these are the enemies you're dealing with here. <laughs> that is it. <laughs> you're dealing with... Moblins? I've got that wrong, most likely, but I don't care. Those are the main enemies in this place. Remember, we dealt with a few of those in level 1. Sure, most likely only dealing with... Um, remember to use a half-tile trick. Uh, half-tiles are very helpful. Level 7 is also probably the most maze-like level in the first quest. Come on. Don't mind my terrible playing against a dig dogger in a room full of... And look at that! We have Stalfos in level 7. Look at that. Look at that! Stalfos in level 7, it's insane. Anyway, let's make our way back. You can always try and bomb walls. Probably a good idea as well, because I feel like there's actually a wall you can bomb. In like the first room or the second room or something. This room, I think. You get bombs. Usually, general idea is if you get bombs in an area, you can bomb walls.
Yeah. Very nice. Like, look at this! Ropes in level 7. What the hell? Didn't even get anything for that room. Yeah, this place is very weird. <laughs> Smoke trick with the dongos, and just remember that bombs don't damage you in Zola One, so you can stand as close as you want and be perfectly fine. This. Look at that. It's insane. But yeah, level 7 is quite large. I think it's the largest non... Get a compass here. Level 7 is probably the largest non-level 9 stage in this game. It is quite big. <laughs> And just full of dead rooms that you don't need to go into just because they're there. Why the hell would you want to go into them? But of course, I'm crazy and I want to explore every room in this place. As such, that is exactly what I'm going to do. Only normal bubbles to deal with. It's not that bad. Once more. That one split off into two Dodongo Babies, as I like to call them. They're not actually called the Dongo Babies, but you know what I mean. Feel like you can bomb a wall coming up right here. I was about to say, once I get my sword beams back, I can deal with these guys a lot better. But here I am, taking hits. <laughs> Pot shots, if you will. I'm gonna go back to that room. Pretty sure there's actually a rather important item in there. back. Dongos do respawn. It's really weird, but... Aha! Bomb upgrade. Another lovely bomb upgrade. We only just have enough, but that is very nice. That is the other bomb upgrade in the game. I almost completely forgot about that, in all honesty. That's embarrassing. Anyway. <laughs> yes, there is another Dodong... There is another bomb upgrade right there. Very nice bomb upgrade. Enemies will not respawn because of bubbles. Very nice. Okay. Let's continue on up. Alright. This is where the roadblock comes in. Grumble, grumble. Give this guy the meat. That you bought at the end of the last episode. That I bought at the end of the last episode. And that you should have bought. In between levels. And, yeah. Did I explain that this place is very large? Yeah. One room that I missed, I'm actually going to go back to afterwards. Pretty sure it actually contains the item for this place. Yeah. As I said, this place is very confusing to navigate. I have a lot. Once again, we end up coming to a point where it gets extremely linear. So if we continue our way around right here. So 
So yeah, using the half tile against Moblins is probably the best place to learn how to use the half tile trick. As if you stand on the correct half tile, they won't actually attack you, which is very nice. So, we've basically reached the point where we can go no further. So, actually gonna have to make my way back. As that room's a dead end. <laughs> How fun. <laughs> That's always fun. Don't worry, we'll be seeing some more annoying bubbles in the second quest. The first quest, the bubbles are not that bad, in all honesty. Like, they can be bad, but they're not that bad. Alright. There is a wall in here. Once we get the map, it becomes a lot easier to navigate the place. <laughs> Here's another one of these things. And you get a key for that. That's technically where you get another key. So, yes, you do get all the keys you need in the stage itself. I think there's one exception. Which is like back in level 2 or something, I don't know. One of the levels has a place and it's really annoying. Alright. So blue things in dungeons usually give a lot of health. Which is quite funny. Stealth are uh, no problem at all. Alright. Thunderbomb. Or not. Hmm. Is it possible to get confused? Yes. Yes it is. I know. You gotta come from down. Can't bomb left, but you gotta come from down. And I bet that's what it is. Sorry I'm doing a lot of walking around. Level 7 is extremely mazy, which is so much fun to deal with. Alright. This room. Yes, it is this room. I remember, there was a door somewhere around here. Alright. Open the door up. Head on up. That's helpful. There's a secret in the tip of the nose. So, that's kind of hard to figure out. It's being extremely non-helpful. You actually... You know, you see that blank spot in the map? Like, where the eye is meant to be? You're actually meant to go through there. <laughs> it's confusing, I know. As I said, level 7 is probably the most maze-like level in the first quest. That isn't level 9. Level 9 is just a pain in general. We don't talk a level 9. We'll get to level 9 eventually. We'll get there eventually. <sighs> Yay. Yes, but a lot of backtracking otherwise. It's a very long level. Alright. Can I go straight down in that room, maybe? I don't think so. I feel like I can't. Alright. So... Can we go straight down? No, we can't. Okay. I feel like I'm gonna miss a room. As I said, have to go in the middle. Uh, 
in the middle is where you find the... Come on. Thank you. Now, I'm not sure if you can actually bomb again. Yeah, you can bomb again. <laughs> we can keep going. <laughs> so, if you want the dungeon item, you actually come up here. The boss goes that way. Your item is this way. You need two keys, although I'm pretty sure you're given another key if you take the wrong path. So yeah, this level is heavily designed in a way that you do not know where you're going to go. Um, it's strange like that. And because I've been defeating like every enemy, I have an overabundance of keys, I don't have to worry about keys. Is that gonna hit? Okay. This is an example of a dig dogger boss not going the way I want it. <laughs> Once the baby starts moving, it's a bit annoying to deal with it. Okay. Having That was a nice hit. So you're given bombs for a reason, because you got to actually bomb to the right. You see, there's an extra room at the top right here. And... Yeah, they give you... War Masters! This point. Once they're all defeated, you can push the block to get the dungeon item, finally, for level 7. Not really. <laughs> this actually drops you off here. So, the game actually wants you to bomb left to actually get into the Arclementus fight. And I don't know why they picked Arclementus as the boss. He goes down really easily. Anyway, you may have noticed I missed something. I still need to get the actual dungeon item itself. It's not that far, it's only in the opening of the stage. So, let's go back in! <laughs> We're not completely done with level 7 yet. We need to get our dungeon item. And the dungeon item is actually... Technically... You should get it before you get the bomb upgrade, but I'm an idiot. So... We're going to head back this way. Because it's one of those you feel like you forgot something moments. As I said, this level's just designed to be annoying to get through. <laughs> like, the enemies are easy, piss easy. They are not hard at all. But getting the dungeon item? It's not this way. So it's before heading up to the upper half of the stage. Um, which makes it fun. You can actually head over to the other side. Basically, if you could push a block in the room, try pushing a block. Because they do not give, like, a spot at all. It's just sitting there. <laughs> it's one of those ones. And I'll get some money back as well, because definitely got enough of that. I feel like it's this room. It's 
So in some cases you can actually push one of the statues. Which is both funny and annoying. I'm sorry I have to go through this. I completely forgot about where the red candle is. Oh yeah, that's the item for this stage. The red candle. Mm -hmm. Karma. Which block are you hiding? <laughs> it's not even a room. <laughs> How joyous and fun you have to be to deal with this stage. Why don't I have my grimmer yet? Come on. We're gonna head up. Feel like I have explored every room here. I'm pretty sure it's actually at the very top of that dead end route. Or this room. Could be this room. That's the other annoying thing. Level 7 is not difficult, it's just really long and maze-like. It's one of these blocks, I bet. Not that right. Alright. I think I have an idea where it is. Go all the way up. Here I am, pushing all the blocks. <laughs> no. That's a dead end. When you have more enemies to deal with, that it gets more annoying. Where is the red candle? <laughs> this is the first time where um I completely forgot about where it is. Crap! Where is it? <laughs> I don't want to use a guide, but I kind of have to right now. I actually don't know where it is. Wait a minute. What? Oh! I'm an idiot. I completely forgot to push the block in the middle of the room. Duh. It's this room. What am I doing? Quest to find the red candle is complete. And I said, oh yeah, this is a room where you got an item really easy to find items like this. But what? 
I just defeated all the enemies and continued on. Wow, I'm an idiot. Look at that. There's a red candle. Jesus Christ, that took forever. Thank you. Okay, with that, I am done with level 7. Okay, thank God for that. So, next time, we gotta get the final Triforce piece in level 8. And then, there's only a couple more parts left of this playthrough. Wow, only feels like I started it a couple weeks ago. Probably because I did only start it a couple weeks ago. Anyway, until next time, goodbye.